Right, so this is a follow-up to the last video where I tried to retrobrite this mouse with washing powder. That didn't work at all. It kind of did work because I did it in water and that worked. But this time I am going to do something different. I've actually got liquid hydrogen peroxide. It's some 12% and it came from these APC Pure people in the UK. And they're quite good because they've got loads of chemicals that you can buy and this wasn't that expensive. So I'm going to do a similar experiment to last time except this time I'm going to do two, two different variations of hydrogen peroxide. I'm not going to use the full 12% because I, I think that's overkill. So I'll probably dilute one of these down to 3% and the other one I'll dilute down to 1%. I think 1% is still going to work fine but I don't actually know. Oh, I can hear it fizzing. And we'll stick them both under the same UV light, keep them uh, covered to stop any gases evaporating or anything like that. And then I'll probably leave them in for an hour and we'll see what we get. And, and for reference beforehand, the two sides are about the same brightness and it's a bit lighter on that side, but that's also about the same brightness. So I think I'll put the top in the 3% and I'll put the bottom in the 1%. This is kind of my experiment to see if this is the way I'll do it when I do a full computer case. This is quite cheap, but I think even five liters of this, which is what this is, wouldn't be enough to cover a whole computer case. But from what I've seen of other people doing it online, they buy 12%, but then they're only putting a liter of it in like a whole tub. So they're probably diluting it down to about one anyway. So I think about 1% solution is going to work, but I don't exactly know. So I'll try the three and I'll try the one. Maybe it just affects the speed that you can do it at. Plus, I'm hoping this works because then this mouse will start to look quite nice as well. So I'll go mix up the hydrogen peroxide now. So I've got my two solutions of hydrogen peroxide. I've got 1%, roughly 1% and roughly 3%. It's not perfect, but um, it's good enough. So I'm going to dump these uh, into these containers. There we go. And I've weighted it down with a little brass hinge underneath just to keep it there. I've actually got half a litre of that left. And this one will get the 1%. There we go. And I'm just going to cover them with cling film. This cling film doesn't cling. I wasn't expecting the cling film not to cling. It's clinging to my arm. Oh, is it? Is it not clinging because it's on an anti-static mat? <laughs> it's actually sitting on an anti-static mat. Could be that. I don't know. Does cling film not work when it's on there? Oh yeah, maybe that's it. I wasn't expecting that. Right, these two guys are going to go in the retrobriting box. Hey, I tell you what, you can actually see where the plastic is actually not yellowed. Because that, that bottom one on the left is actually not yellowed uh, on the bottom. It, it's not actually as bright there, at least in the camera it's not. So that's interesting. So I'm going to leave them under there for an hour. So we've got 3% on the right and we've got 1% on the left. Uh, and we'll see how we do. It's been just about an hour. So there we are. So there's definitely bubbles appearing on stuff. Uh, I can see that the 1% one, it's still yellow on the sides. 3% one might actually be a bit lighter. I'm not going to take them out now. I think I'm going to leave them in for a bit longer. I think this needs way more than an hour. I did want to check them after an hour just in case something dramatic had happened. But yeah, the number of bubbles that have appeared on everything is quite surprising, but it seems to be the same on both pretty much. Oh no, maybe there's a bit more in the 3%. So I think I'll keep going. I'll maybe give it another hour or two. I'll put them back in and then we'll come back in a little bit. Right, so this is after two hours. This actually still looks quite similar, so I'm probably going to leave it in for another two hours from this point, I think. I can still see that the bottom half of the mouse is still a bit yellow. The top may be going whiter, but it, I can still see a little bit of yellow on it. So I'm going to leave this in for another two hours, maybe, and then I'll come back to it after that. Okay, so it's been four hours now. So, ooh, let's have a look. The top actually looks pretty good. I don't even know if that's the right colour now. So that's the thing. The bottom, I can see the sides definitely aren't the same colour as the bottom where it's not gone as where it's not gone as discoloured. Um, but I think that is brighter too. Yeah, so let me pull them out and then I'll have a look at them. Uh, I'm not sure if it's actually got any lighter. I think it has, um, but I haven't really got anything to compare it to from before. I'm just comparing these two sides. So this was in 3% solution and this was in about 1% solution. And if you put them next to each other, actually in the camera there, it does appear 
it kind of appears like this is actually has got a bit brighter than the other side it, to my eye it doesn't yeah it doesn't always look like that but it actually has it's gone the three percent is definitely working a lot better than the one percent and that's over four hours yeah more more the merrier it seems so three percent's better than one percent i mean maybe you can get the same effect from this if you just leave it longer but then we kind of already know that, that you could just leave it in water and get the same effect. Yeah, it looks like it has changed and made an effect. And it's still not right, though, because the inside is still, uh, it's still different colour to the inside. There's still quite a significant amount of yellowing. I think that 3% solution is probably a bare minimum for doing this. So, yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll just put both of these in a 6% solution and then we'll see how they come out. Because it looks like the 3 is probably working, but it's just taking too long and the 1 doesn't really work. So I'm going to go higher. I think it needs a higher concentration. I'm going to go with 6%. I'm just going to dilute the hydrogen peroxide by half. Right, so it's been four hours and both the parts that are in 6% hydrogen peroxide. So let's see how they've done. It's quite white actually, it doesn't look yellow at all. And the mouse, the bottom part of the mouse, does look a bit yellow on the side still. I mean, maybe it needs longer than this four hours in here, but I think I'll take them out now and have a look at them anyway and just see where we're up to with them. And it's looking pretty good, actually, way better than it did before, but it's still got a little bit of yellowing on the outside. Not a lot, but if you look at the inside and compare it to the outside, it is slightly different. There's still like a little bit of yellow on there. So four hours in the 6% wasn't even enough. So I think I'm going to do what I did before, which is just put these back in here and then leave these overnight with the, without the cling film on or anything like that. I'm just going to leave them overnight and see what I get. And then we'll come back in the morning and see if the inside is the same as the outside. Okay, so these have been in all night now and they are starting to look quite a bit brighter. There's a little bit of brown on top there. I think that's rust from the brass singe that was underneath. Yeah, they do. They do produce a lot of bubbles and you can actually like see them fizzing. There you go. So it's reacting all the time. Not sure if it's reacting with that hinge underneath or if it's reacting, reacting with the mouse. But it does look quite white there. That side's still a bit yellow. And the top is looking all right. I think one of the things is to make this go faster is it probably needs a bit of heat in here because I think because I'm doing this in the retrobrite box, it doesn't get really hot in this box. And this, this water's quite cold. I mean, it's been off, the light's been off for a while now, but it was quite cold after, right after I took it off. Maybe in the future, if I'm doing this in a bigger scale, it might be worth investing in like a, if we can get some kind of little heater that can heat the water to like 40 degrees or something like that, that'd be really good. But I'm gonna get these out and wash them and then we'll see how they look. So they've been in for about nine hours. So this is the finished product. It does actually look quite nice. I, I still think it, it actually didn't go fully back to the color that it's supposed to be. At least this bottom part didn't. The top part, which wasn't as yellowed on this side is actually looking almost back to normal this side's still not quite the right color but it's getting closer in fact you can see i think it's a bit whiter because these two were in different solutions this one was in one percent for some time so it clearly didn't work as well but this mouse was severely yellowed when i got it so it's it's significantly different now it does actually look quite good and it did take a while which is one thing but but it's produced nice even results i think that's the main thing and it didn't require me to you know worry about whether it's going to come out really horrible or anything so this is definitely a better technique for retrobriting cases although it's just a bit more of a pain because you need liquid hydrogen peroxide you need a big bath or a a vat to put it in and you need somewhere where you can put that while you put it under UV light. If you can put it outside that's probably better in the summer but I can probably still do this indoors. I could probably just do it in a tub in the bath or something like that. So that's quite good. So I'm actually quite pleased with that. That mouse actually looks quite good now. Detach these weights that I put on it which is just a couple of door hinges. By the way the, the hydrogen peroxide did rust. Yeah it's like really rusted this, this hinge. So if you put in any metal in there I think you want to be careful yeah that that was a perfectly new hinge when i got it and it's now really stiff and i can see the rust coming out of this one here there's rust on that one there don't know if you can see it so not good for metal basically the hydrogen peroxide but then you really want to be putting just the plastic in it but just be careful you put anything in there that is actually got any metal parts on it oh yeah that one's really stiff afterwards when i poured it out it was a little bit brown and i don't think that was from what it had done in here. I think it was from like just the rust. You can see there's a little bit of rust collected inside the mouse there. But this is looking really nice. This is a, I don't, I don't know if this mouse works, but I think this is a proper Commodore A1200 mouse that came with the computer. 
but I'm quite happy with that. I think that's a maybe slower but more reliable technique. I could maybe get it to go a bit faster if I maybe put a little heater in the water. If you leave it out in the sun, you probably don't need that. But I think if you're doing this in a retrobriting box like I am, it doesn't get very warm in there. The, the lamp itself does make quite a bit of heat, but most of it comes out of the box. I would say the water has only been heated by a degree or two, that's all. So a little heater of some kind, even maybe just a lamp inside the box, like a normal lamp that generates a bit of heat, might actually really help. The bottom looks fantastic, but it did before. <laughs> One of the things I do need to do is clean this because it's really dirty. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but it's quite a bit of, I think it's hair or something in there. So I'll clean that out as well. That is nasty. Give this cord a bit of a clean while I'm here. It's pretty dirty. I don't think this is gonna really gonna come off. Oh yeah. This is cleaning up. Oh, that's a tight fit down there. It's significantly whiter than the cable now anyway. <laughs> if I remember right, this clips in at the end there. And these screws got a bit messed up from the, uh, the washing powder incident. The washing powder actually took some of the black enamel off. Right, let's start back together. And I think this, this thing can just go in the soapy water as well, just to get a bit of a clean. It's pretty dirty, actually. There we go. And that's reasonably well roughed up. And there it is, the finished product. That actually looks pretty good, actually. I'm actually quite impressed. It's actually whiter than the cable now. So may maybe I have been trying to get it whiter than it should be. But the inside's definitely a different color to that. Quite happy with that. I wonder if this mouse works. I've never tried it. You know, looking at it now, it looks like, I'm not sure if the top is, it's funny because the top's definitely the wrong color, but it looks, <laughs> it just looks really white to me now. But that's maybe because I've been used to looking at this mouse as it was so yellow. But the bottom, yeah, the bottom looks really white. So yeah, I think that's really good. So here is the slightly disassembled A1200. Let's plug our mouse in, seems as that's what we want to test. Oh yeah, one last thing. Let's put the sticker back. Can't forget about the Commodore sticker. There we go. Perfect. Back in working order there. <laughs> right, so just got the Mega test kit in because this has got a mouse tester in it. Right, we have, oh, mouse is already working. It's a bit squeaky. But I don't think that's anything to do with the retrobriting. Controller ports. There we go. Perfect. That's my Amiga mouse restored. And yeah, and it's worth keeping in mind at the start of this campaign for this mouse, uh, it was actually pretty much the same color of these keys on the A1200. And now it's closer to the color of the case, really. So that's really quite amazing. That has, that has done really well. So that is probably how I'm gonna do cases in the future because yeah, the cream method has failed for me now. So this peroxide method isn't that much harder and I've got a supplier here in the UK that can get it to me quite quickly as well. So I'm quite happy about that. And this mouse is, <laughs> I'm actually quite happy with this mouse now. Here's one I got with another computer. That hasn't been had anything done to it. This isn't a Commodore mouse though. It says mouse 540. So that's looking really nice. So uh, I've spent two videos retrobriting a mouse, which is really not the most interesting things. But I think in conclusion, if you're gonna do this hydrogen peroxide method I think you need somewhere between three to six percent solution I don't know but I think it needs a little bit of heat as well so doing it out in the sun is just fine but if you're doing it in a box like I am it probably needs a little bit of heat in the box somewhere or maybe a heater in the water just to get it a little bit warmer maybe just to speed up this reaction so you get it done a bit quicker because I've had to leave this for like 12 hours but it has come out really nice and I don't think there's any danger of you getting this wrong as long as you submerge the thing I think this is going to be fine so I am quite happy with that. And it's worth noting that this, um, this floppy drive that I put in this Amiga, the one that didn't come with it, the, the one that I repaired ages ago from the A600, does actually kind of work. It, it loads some games. And I've checked it, like when I do an error check, sometimes it doesn't come up with any errors. So I don't know if maybe I did fix it, but I'm gonna load Tiny Bobble. This is a really good version of Bubble Bobble. And one of the things I've noticed, I've not had an A1200 before, but this screen where it's decrunching is so much slower on the A600 and 500. This is actually quite quick. It does say, please wait a long time, but on the A500, you have to wait a long time.
Do 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 do.